Mr. Williams, we'll just uh, open up for a public comment and then we'll maybe get you back on. Thank you. Sewer. I think there's language there that can be 
you know, whether it's our language, we proposed it, Mr. Longridge responding to it, but those are the three big issues, the sewer, the flooding, and the access, and then the secondary development. And again, I think they're pretty simple changes that can be made. It would make sense, and if we could do those, that would, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you,
they had a few projects that they were working on that weren't selling the way they were, they were planning on selling, and they decided instead of going into a third one that they would hold back until such time things the market changed. Of course, the market hasn't changed since that period of time. Um, you know, I, I've stayed somewhat in contact with them, and they, they have still expressed interest, and I think you've received a, uh, uh, an email that I sent you a copy of from them regarding the development. We're just looking to have this, some of the same opportunities as some of the other properties that are along the riverfront to develop our land. We're not asking much more than that. We know that we have to come in front of you guys for any kind of development that, that occurs on this property, so it's not something that you guys don't have a chance to take a look at. But our concern is in today's world, when dealing with developers and lenders and so on and so forth, everything's online. It isn't like it used to be, so when you get a plan and set off to the side and you didn't see it, these guys go in and they research those plans. And if I go try, you know, if the developer's trying to get a loan and they see that, hey, the city wants this as a park, that's another hit. It, you know, it, it makes it that much harder. It's that much more steps. They will our property will be off the list before it even has a chance to, to, to warrant its merit. Before I have to show them the documents that I got from the Army Corps of Engineering, the documents from Timmins, the documents from several other uh, engineers that have looked at the property and said, yeah, you can do a development on it. All of it is feasible. They, they solved every one of those problems, and none of those problems concerning this development they were proposing put it out of reach, put it made it too expensive. I've never heard that as an issue with developing this property. There are, there are issues, with all sites there are issues. And I've seen many sites around the, the Richmond area that they've done many more dollars to get the site already and available and open for business. So it, you know, that's a determination that we would like to have and we'd like to have the developer to decide if that's too much for them. I appreciate your time, thanks. Any questions for, I mean, any questions for Yeah, next question. Good afternoon. My name is Silver Persinger. I'm a citizen of Richmond, Virginia. This is my second time here in Mr. Ollinger's presentation. I'd like to thank you for his professionalism and his expertise. Uh, I would like to speak in support of uh, number 8, 2012-202. Uh, you just heard from Mr. Shia. I don't know if he's a direct owner of the property or it's his family, but of course he has an interest in this. And then we heard from his lawyer, and then uh, the lawyer from USP. These are people that have a financial stake in this issue. They are hired guns, and that's what they're doing. They're they're paid to to come here and speak to you. I'm a citizen. I'm not paid to be here, and it actually costs me money to attend your meetings particularly since they are held before 5 p.m. Uh, I, 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 uh, I love our natural riverfront. I don't want to see a bunch of garbage built on the riverfront. Not on the shores, not on Mayo Island, not on any of the islands in the, in the middle of the river that run through uh, the city of Richmond. Uh, Mr. Connor, you were not here at my last Monday's meeting, uh, so I will share with you that there was public comment in support of the plan as presented. Uh, that was the, the people that supported the plan as presented were Venture Richmond, the Chamber of Commerce, and several people who I recognize as community activists. Uh, this is being held up by the economic interest involved. I am a little uh, concerned at, at the process because if, it appears that if you have money enough to hire lawyers, that you can extend the amount of time you have to comment on this kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't think rich people should have any more power than regular citizens. Sadly, as you look in the chamber, there aren't many regular citizens here. Although, to, to the crowd's credit, there are more citizens here than normally attend these committee meetings. Uh, I would like to encourage anyone in the audience to get up. You have three minutes. If you would also like to express your support for this paper, thank you for the opportunity to comment. Others? Mm -hmm. Is this open comment now? Yes, open okay. comment. We thought we were still open. Yes. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Leighton Powell. I'm Executive Director of Seating Virginia, and I'm also a member of the Falls of the James Seating Group Advisory Committee. Um, we are, both groups are in great support of this plan. I think it's been through 
a rigorous process. Uh, I wish all of you had been at the planning commission meetings when this was going on. We had a great turnout over and over and over for people to say this is a fantastic plan. I serve um, on the Capital Region Collaborative's James River Work Group, and Mr. Olinger did a presentation to that group a couple of weeks ago. And this is mostly regional people. I think um, I and one, one other person had seen the Riverfront presentation. And the, the, the response from people in the room was overwhelming. They were blown away by the vision this plan creates and how fantastic it would be. So it's, I really do urge you to, to move it forward. I think you're gonna, the, the reaction from citizens is gonna be overwhelmingly positive. I'm sorry that we are still at this point where we're unable to move past on a couple of these parcels. Um, I will tell you that more people than I've ever seen showed up at the Planning Commission to say, I support this plan except, and it referred to the, the way that the, the USP parcel was referenced in the first draft of the Riverfront Plan. I want to remind you that when we were going through the downtown master plan process, citizens overwhelmingly said, we want that USP parcel, which was then called Echo Harbor, to be Park. That is what the majority of people over and over and over, and you've heard them in all these meetings and you were there. Then after a couple of years, the amendments came forward. The compromise language, the compromise that was reached after meeting after meeting after meeting was, we'll have a park option that's the primary option with a secondary development option in the event that the land can't be acquired. We felt that that was fair. Keep the onus on the citizens to figure out how we're going to acquire this land and make it a park. We're not asking the city to buy it, but we felt that that represented a nice compromise. It seemed fair to me. When the Riverfront plan came out, the initial, the initial draft earlier this year, we found that that parcel was now about future development. And that is what people overwhelmingly responded to when we started having these hearings over the summer for the Riverfront plan. People said this is a great plan, but we don't like that we've gone back to having this label as future development, that fight has been fought. I have been to more meetings than I can even count at this point for people, with people who are concerned about preserving the view that named Richmond. And I'm sorry, but the view is the panorama. If you look at any view from Richmond and Thames, it's not just the bend. It's the bend and the turn. That is what the view is. And we can, anyway. With regard to um, the other parcel, I understand the, the Mayo Island folks' concerns, and I, I, would, I would say let's, let's go back to the, to the downtown master plan for both of them. If you have any kind of um, uncomfortable feelings about it, that seems fair. Again, that was worked out. I don't care about that piece. I think, I think the development constraints of both those sites make it very difficult for either to develop. But I'm not in favor of taking away somebody's development rights. Now both of those owners purchased this land, they have by right, they, have, they can do by right development right now. We are not taking away their rights. So I would urge you to, let's pass this thing, let's not have this fight again. I mean, I can bring out hundreds of people on Monday night if you want to hear it. If you want to hear about the concern with the view, you'll, be, you'll get into those emails in the coming week. But let's just, let's get this going. Please, can we please get this going? And let's, it's going to transform Richmond. The excitement is palpable, people cannot wait. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there others you would like to speak to the plan? Council members, my name is Al Bowers. I'm a citizen. I paid the BD. But I just want to share a few things that I think are very important for the city. I'm in favor of this amendment for the USP. And here are the reasons why. My understanding is that we will have 1,200 new jobs created as a result of this project. Additionally, also being that I'm a taxpayer and citizen of the city, we're talking about creating at least $4.5 million in additional tax revenue the city at the needs. Third, these folks are saying that a donation of an easement capital trail and open space will also be provided along with public access. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us how many, how many jobs did you say? 1,200 minimum new jobs.
just how to bring it back to the community. Um, I don't know. You had a question beyond the channels. Had a question. Mr. Cotton, if you can, you can give me a heads up or a heads down. In the broadest base state, is it fair to say what you're asking for is consistency with the downtown plan? Yes. Thank you. That's not a question. Ms. Brown? In the broadest base state, is it fair to say what you're asking for is that this plan needs to be different from the downtown plan? Yes, because it's progressive. Thank you. Change, things are changed. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Leaves. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Bryant, can you tell us if and how 1413 might impact uh, your project? 1413 is actually a separate issue, and that kicks in even with the changes that we're requesting for the riverfront plan because it references any time it's been in the master plan. Um, and that's an issue we need to deal with. Um, and but going forward, we can't get to that point unless we can get to a point where we can continue to go forward with our business plan because we're not considered to be a marketable project. Uh, we can't get our tenants to give commitments, our potential tenants. We've got Fortune 500 company looking at it. It's going to bring a young, dynamic um, private company here, but they're not going to commit on a what if because they know that if you're a city park, you've got to go through um, other issues and that uh, getting funding for construction uh, of the project would be very difficult. So we're just asking to be able to move forward so that we can you know, deal with that. And 1413 uh, is going to kick in with reference to the, the downtown plan, which is sad that, that that has to be, but I understand that's going to affect a lot of projects. It's not just ours that it's going to affect. There are a couple of them that are, that are coming out soon that you'll see, I understand, that are already going to be affected by that. That's not something that's singularly us. And, and secondly, who, who owns this public park land that is being referenced here? USP owns the project, and what we are uh, discussing with the city right now is uh, being able to provide a generous amount of that property, of our property and our riverfront, for public use access easement, including the continuation of the Virginia Capitol Trail along the waterfront section of our property as opposed to having to go around our project uh, on Dock Street, which would be their alternative. So remember, what I said is green space and interactive green space is good for us. We embrace that. We want to see activity down there. That is good for, for Richmond and for, for business. But I'm just trying to clear up uh, the, the land and the access. Uh, the city doesn't currently own it. No, they don't own it. They would have to buy it. <laughs> And we've said it's not for sale, so you know it's going to be a hard impasse. The reason it's not for sale is because we feel we can contribute more to the city and to the river, supporting the riverfront plan by owning it and providing a uh, an amenity that can be made that we will guarantee will be maintained. Because the city doesn't necessarily have to put their dollars there in the park system to maintain it. So we, that's a good thing about business, good green inter interactive good green space for businesses. Keep it maintained so you keep attracting people there. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, some other questions for our people. I'll bring it back to the committee. Um, what is it? Um, Mr. Chair, um, we did ask that uh, Mr. Oldenbrad, if he had an opportunity to read that as well. Any other additional comments that he wants to make? Yes or no? Thank you. Um, quickly, I think there's I think there's something we can work out with Mayo. Uh, that's all. That's all I'm going to say about that. On on the scenic resources page, uh, we do need to define the view shed. I think we kicked it down the court in 2009. Uh, however, I think the riverfront plan is not the view shed. And I don't want, I don't think we should confuse the two. And I also don't think we should say, well, let us move ahead with something while we handle the view shed solely to the extent that all of a sudden what we're looking at disappears. So I think there needs to be, and the plan says that. And in fact, USP and their argument doesn't strike any of that. So we do need to make a determination as to what that is, figure it out, and move on. 
that said, in your solving like positions, we have one developer says make it look like the downtown plan, one developer saying make it not look like the downtown plan. I think not making it look like the downtown plan is a material change, and I think that is something that, uh, as I stand here right now, um, as we've gone through this process with the planning commission and others, that is that gives me pause, but it's your decision. Mr. Chair, I want to thank um, those that have come down to speak in regards to this, and I certainly want to thank um, the staff for their work that they've done with this master plan. It's a fabulous plan. I mean, you know, it's got all the whistles and bells, and it just feels like for the first time, Richmond City, uh, the core of our city is going to be built from the river out. It's amazed me how many people just don't even hardly know that we have a We've come a long ways already from what it used to be, but you know, it is it is a fabulous plan. There's been a lot of interaction, a lot of involvement. I were able to attend some of the meetings that when the consultant was working with the citizens and you know, folk were just off the hook about accessibility, ability to cross the river built and to walk out into the river. Um, so I think that, you know, it's, it really is a well done plan. Um, and thankful, thankfully, we have a clean enough river that we can appreciate it and want to enjoy it. Um, I do think that there are some minor changes that we propose that are significant to both parties and that we would um, Maybe between now and Monday, they can work out those minor changes if that is possible to at least come to some realization that uh, there would not be an impediment. So I would recommend, uh, Mr. Chair, that we move this paper forward to Council for Action on Monday with a recommendation from the committee. Go ahead, second. Um, I'm going to make a comment for me. As a council, we have to have some we have two parties here looking at the same plan. One is saying it's got to be running parallel to the downtown master plan. The other is saying it needs to be different from the downtown master plan. And I understand the arguments of both. Things have changed. It's three years down the road. Um, uh, and I understand that. We're also talking about what the public has recommended versus what property owners have recommended. We have to respect public opinion, we have to respect private property rights. To me, it really comes down to do we want to be consistent or do we want to change? I lean towards consistency. If we keep on switching things up, we will lose the faith of the public who has put hours into this plan, days, weeks, months into this plan. And that causes me a lot of Concern. I've never had a member of my district come up to me and say, Mr. Samuels, we really think you need to change the downtown master plan. We really think you need to change the riverfront plan. What they say to me time and time again is, pass the plan as it stands. If there's a technical issue that we need to address, a comma's in the wrong place, we need to make it consistent with the downtown master plan. I appreciate those recommendations. I don't want to make it harder on anybody to develop land, but I also think that if the public has dictated what they want to see in a specific location as public service servants, we have an obligation to take that with great weight. I'll second the recommendation to forward to council without a recommendation. Uh, but I do believe, if it was my personal preference, we would in fact pass the plan and come back for amendments as they were necessary, um, even if that means immediately, as opposed to trying to hold a special meeting to get this under the wire and potentially have to go through the whole process again. So you're second. No, I'm second. Okay. I think, you know, we go to I honestly <clears throat> feel like that we have property interest something in the way for them to get the finance that they need to, to uh, further the problems along for whatever purpose. I think that needs to be looked at. 
closely. You know, we're putting people on the moon. I know that, that it sounds kind of crazy, but I think there may be a willing way. I don't know, but I know that there could be a lot of restrictions if they get to the point that, that they're ready to do this. It's not going to be an easy process. They've got to go through all the hoops and, and stuff that everybody else has to go through, and you know, Lord help them because it's, it's tough. If I had that day on well, property, I don't know what I would do. I would just, but, but I respect their need to move forward with the property. You know, we've got something that we can do to help them make their property more marketable because it is their property. You know? So with that said, I'm going to leave it at that. And um, I'll call for the, all in favor of Ms. Robinson's motion say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 